Good morning. Welcome to Catalyst and our Sunday online service. If you're joining us today for the first time, I'm John Murray, lead pastor of Catalyst Vineyard Church in Ithaca, New York. And today, we are on message number one in our nine-part fall series entitled Discovering DMM, Raising the Sales to Make Disciples. And that really key word in this series is going to be that word discovery. And because the word discovery or discover is a verb that means to disclose, to lay open, to make something visible, to find or to reveal, to make known what has been unseen or unknown, to obtain for the first time sight or knowledge of something that has already existed. And if I look at my own experience over the last 18 months of this pandemic, that's what God has been doing to me. He's been opening my eyes, almost like the blind man in Mark 8, the guy who was outside the city of Bethesda with Jesus, and Jesus spit in his hands and prayed for his eyes. And he asked the guy, hey, can you see now? And, and he said, I, I see people, but they look like trees. And then he prayed for him again. And I feel like I've been in a process. God has been revealing to me what it looks like to make disciples, what it looks like to be the church. And so with that in mind, we're going to be starting today with a take 10, as in take 10 minutes message entitled, What is DMM? But first, our Catalyst worship team is going to lead us in two songs of worship, and then I'll be back to share today's message. stars they wept the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was falling his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon him
So I'm going to start today's message, what is DMM, with what DMM stands for. And so DMM stands for Disciple Making Movement. And this acronym is also closely related to CPM, which stands for Church Planting Movement. And in this Take 10 message, I thought it would be good to provide you with some references. So if you want to read, you can read some of the books that I read over the last 18 months. And here's a list of five. First, Church Planting Movements, which was written by David Garrison in 2004, and some people say that that's the best book on church planting you could read other than the book of Acts itself. Number two, Miraculous Movements, written by Jerry Trosdale, and Trosdale was a member of City Teams, which is a rescue mission in Southern California that was reaching out to urban dwellers, and then eventually they started making disciples, and they went over the globe and focused on Africa. Number three, Contagious Disciple Making by David Watson, who along with Victor Johns was a part of a movement that started in Bojapuri, India, that went from very few believers to 10 to 12 million people being baptized and tens of thousands of churches being planted. The next one, The Kingdom of Unleashed, also by Trosdale, really just takes an update as city teams eventually became what's known as New Generations, another ministry focused primarily on Africa. Mega Church to Multiplication is actually written by a U.S. pastor, Chris Galanos, who was leading a 10-site megachurch and decided that the only way they could achieve the growth goals they had was to begin to use DMM practices. And so they totally altered their model. And so what I want to do is I want to take a look now at what would be a couple of definitions of what DMM means. Here's the first one. DMM is obedience-based discipleship that sees disciples reproducing disciples, leaders reproducing leaders, and churches reproducing churches, and movements reproducing movements. And that's Stan Parks, Vice President of Global Strategies at Beyond. And interestingly enough, during this last 18 months, almost every one of these people I have had an opportunity to listen to mostly on Zoom. But these these people are currently active and currently practicing DMM and seeing results all around the globe. And Parks actually was on a call that I was on last week talking about strategies that are currently working both in the United States and overseas. And the second definition I want to share with you is by Roy Morin. And and it's DMM is a strategy that has six key characteristics. It's God-ordained. In other words, it's authored by God. Number two, it's spirit-dependent. The Holy Spirit is critical. It's Bible-centric. It's focused on God's Word. It's obedience-focused, discovery-based, and disciple-making driven. In brief, DMM turns average followers of Jesus into event planners rather than salesmen for Jesus. So they can invite their neighbors and workmates into small groups designed to hear from God through reading the Bible, obeying what it says, and sharing it with their social networks. And Morin was actually the one that I first connected with in this journey over the last 18 months. And basically, um, he's, he's been focused on household evangelism. In other words, instead of reaching one person, like when Philip was with the Ethiopian eunuch, reaching households or groups of people, which we see all throughout the book of Acts. And and then when you really look at DMM, one of the key things to understand is, well, how would you measure success in DMM? We're all familiar with how we measure success in church today, but here's how success is measured in DMM. Success to executing a DMM strategy can be summed up in two words, generational discipleship. They are measuring whether disciples are making disciples that make more disciples. When that happens, disciples naturally form into churches, and many new churches are planted. They don't plant churches hoping to get disciples. 
That's what I did is what Chris Galanos is saying, and that's what Kathy and I did. They make disciples, and from those disciple-making efforts, churches are planted. And I think that's a great picture because the American church model that so many of us have only experienced, the American church model has very different measurements for success. They're measuring attendance at worship service. They're measuring how much was given in the offering plate. They're measuring how much programs that they're sponsoring are growing. They're, they're measuring how many square feet their building is or how many seats are in the auditorium. But DMM is very different than that. DMM is measuring disciple-making efforts. It's measuring what kind of progress is being made on a generational basis in disciples making disciples. And really what DMM focuses on is multiplication instead of addition. Instead of inviting people to come and see in a church building, they're actually going out to tell people about who Jesus is. It's very focused on lost people, which obviously was the focus of Jesus when he said the Son of Man has come to save the, has come to save the lost. That was his focus. He was focused on the lost people of Israel, the lost sheep. Next, let's talk about what are the things that make DMM happen? What are the things, what are these sales that I'm talking about when we say that we need to raise the sales for discipleship making? Here's the seven sales that Beyond Ministries talks about. It talks about sale number one, focus on God's word. That, that that's where God reveals himself. That's where God reveals who he is and what he desires for people to do to obey him. Number two, to multiply extraordinary prayer, which basically it's prayer that she's continues to grow. It's prayer that grows in numbers of people. It's prayer that grows in different varieties. It, it could be prayer walking. It could be multi-hour prayer. It could be all-night prayer. It could be a, a discipline of an hour of prayer with other people once a week. Number three, cast vision to believers. And that's the th time in which you're basically telling people what I'm telling you right now. You're telling them about the way Jesus taught to make disciples. Number four, train believers. Those same believers that you're casting vision to, train them how to go out among the lost, people that are lost in relationship with God. Number five, they go out among the lost in all different ways to be able to, be able to build bridges of trust through meeting needs and through connecting with people in spiritual conversations. Number six, see discovery groups start. And that's this concept of household evangelism. That's this concept of connecting with someone who's a catalyst, who's a person of peace, who can bring their group or their oikos, that can bring their people group together to begin to discover who God is. And then number seven, the ongoing coaching of these leaders. The people that are leading these groups need to be coached on a regular basis. Just like in my old world of coaching wrestling at Ithaca College, wrestlers needed to be coached, and so do people who are disciple makers. They also need to be coached. And one of the things to understand about this generational growth is it's not just a church that plants four churches. That would just be one generation. It's a church that goes out among the lost, among those who are not a church, and that church number one is, is Gen Zero because the, you know, they, they don't have any offspring yet, but they go out and they connect with people that are lost and those people become a church. And then that church goes among those that are lost and they become a church to the fourth generation. And what they say is that a movement is defined is when 100 churches are planted to four generations deep. So this isn't just about a church having multi-sites. This is about a church that actually goes out among the lost where people connect with God and become a church, become a church community themselves. And what I want to do to sort of land this plane today, to be able to bring things to a conclusion, is read to you from David Watson. He's the one that was a part of that Bojapuri movement. Here's his perspective on what it means for discipleship making. So by DMM, we mean discovery model discipleship making movement, which is both an outcome a movement and a process paradigm for ministry in which as believers obey Jesus, they are trained, they train men and women to be contagious disciple makers who pray, who engage lost communities, who find persons of peace, who help them discover Jesus through discovery groups, who baptize new believers, who help them become communities of faith called the church, and then mentor emerging leaders, 
All these very intentional activities catalyze DMMs. Jesus works through ordinary people and they obey his word. A DMM becomes a CPM and Jesus gets the glory for everything that happens. And speaking of discovery, let's take a look at the new discovery series we're going to be doing during the next nine weeks. And that is basically, we're going to be taking a look at this Discovery Bible study, the questions Jesus asked and what he wanted to know. And your first assignment is going to be in Mark 2, verses 1 to 12. I want you to read that in three translations and then hone in on Mark 5 to 12, those eight verses, and ask and focus on the question where he says, which is easier to say? And so let me pray for what's happening over these next nine weeks in all of us. Father, I pray that you would begin to pull back the scales on our eyes and that we would be able to begin to see what it looks like to become church planters, to become disciple makers, to become disciple makers who plant, or who those disciple making movements become church planting movements. Father, I pray you would pull back the scales on our eyes. I pray you'd pull back the scales on my eyes so that we can better see what you desire for us to do in fulfilling your great commission to go and make disciples.